Today we are going to make this 3D effect video by Amon Godzi. We will need a grid background with a blue and red effect, a few rounded squares with blue lights on the edge and some animations. But instead of copying it completely, I add a little something extra and create something similar yet new. Here is a short video version of Amon Godzi that I made. So let's put together this little animation. I was looking for a grid, but since it was too small, I expanded it to full HD, then inverted this new white background to black, and compressed it by reducing and multiplying it. I started a new project, slapped the upper grid on a new layer, adjusted its transparency, but gave it a small vignette effect as a starting point. I quickly made this 1080 by 1080 rounded square with a little blue light on the edge with the PhotoP program, put a red background on it, then slapped this square over it, and then dragged the text layer above it. I changed it to full size, rewrote the text to 1, changed the font to liberty, resized, and positioned it. After that, I pulled in one more text layer, went 30 frames to the right, stretched it, rewrote it to category, changed it to lantastic font, resized it, positioned it, and then distorted it a bit by making its height to 130. I drew a new black layer on it, reduced it, and positioned it at the bottom to cover the lower part of the square. Then I converted the first text layer to a compound clip, set the slide up animation, and increased its length. After that, I set the zoom out animation on the category text layer, also increasing its length so that the two animations end at the same time. I rearranged the order of the black layer so that it is at the top, then by turning it 180 degrees with the mask slash split function and increasing the feather value. Then by repositioning it a little I hide the upper part with a small transition. Here's the result. I'll quickly export it and prepare it by rewriting the number twice more. I undo the compound clip, rewrite the number to 2, adjust its width a bit, then make a compound clip out of it again, rearrange the order of the layers, then put a slide up animation on it and adjust its length. I will do another export and repeat the steps, rewriting the number to 3, which I will also export. I go back to the previous project, import the three videos I made earlier, then place them one after the other on a new layer and adjust the length of the background layer accordingly. With the help of the chroma key, I removed the red background from all three animations one by one, then by selecting the flip 4 animation on the animation slash combo tab, I achieved this rotating 3D effect. I repeat and put the flip 4 animation on the other two videos, then I make a compound clip from each of them one after the other and by shifting them by 30 frames, I place them on top of each other on a new layer and improve the order of the layers. After that, I shift the first and third videos along the x-axis by 1000 and minus 1000, placing the three videos next to each other, which looks like this now. Since the image rotates excessively towards the end of the animation, counting back 20 frames from the end of the animation, I freeze the current frame with the right click edit and freeze function and delete the part behind it. Then repeat this on the other two layers and extend the length of the first two layers so that their end matches with the end of the third layer. It's starting to take shape, but if you take a closer look at this part, you can see that since the tracks were animated separately rather than as a single video, the 3D effect is a bit distorted. I will make this disappear by rotating the first and third layers a little by a few degrees. I place keyframes at the beginning and end of the first animation. At the beginning I set the value to 0 and at the end I set the value to minus 5. Finally I set this value to the frozen frame as well and then I repeat this with the third layer. Only here I will rotate the animation and the frozen layer by plus 5 degrees. If we look at it now, it starts to get better. But the numbers are a little too close to each other, so I increase the displacement on the x-axis from 1000 to 1200, and for the sake of the 3D effect I shift it by minus 50 along the y-axis, then repeat this on the other, also rewriting the values from minus 1000 to minus 1200 and minus 50 on the layer, thus achieving this nice 3D effect. Okay, we can add the background grid, with which I also want to achieve a similar effect. I cut the background in half at the end of the animation, then I place an image above it to make sure that the animation is as long as the numbers, and I delete the layer below it. I place this red and blue background above it, which I also created with Photo P, and I set its transparency to 50, but since I feel the grid is a bit strong, I rewrite its opacity property to 50. I quickly check. I apply the vignette effect to this new layer as well, but since I still feel the background is too strong, I reduce the opacity value of both layers to 30. 
I like it better that way, so I select both layers and make a compound clip from them. Then on the animation slash combo tab, I now select the flip 3 animation. I enlarge it to 500% and position it in the middle so that the animation completely covers the screen. I select the layer and use the right click range function to export only the selected part, delete it, then import the previous video fragment, then replace the current background, but since they are not the same length, I delete the original and drag the new one in its place. I jump to the beginning and find the frame when it completely covers the screen and delete the parts in front of it by pressing the Q hot key, then using the edit reverse function I reverse my background video, position it in the middle and find the point when it almost completely covers the screen, I cut it and delete the part in front of it again, and finally I put a fade in animation on it, increasing its length. I select the number layers and move them back to the end of the background animation. I look for the part of the background video that is already tilted but still completely covers the screen. Then again using the edit slash freeze function, I freeze the last frame and stretch it out to cover the length of the animations. I quickly check the result and for a nicer effect, I put a fade in animation on it, increasing the duration to one second. Then I repeat this and put it on the second and third animations as well. Let's see what we created. This in itself is quite good, but the value animations are still missing. I quickly created these animations based on the previous ones. I import them and place them on a new layer, slightly offset from the appearance of the numbers. Here I play a bit and move it several times, testing where it looks the best, and then using the chroma key, I hide the background so that only the value remains. I roughly position it in place, and then, following the pattern of the previous ones, I go back 20 frames from the end and cut off the end, then I rotate it by minus 5 degrees according to the first animation, adjust its position a little more, and then use the freeze function to freeze the last frame of the last animation. I repeat the previous steps with the other two value animations. I go back 10 frames from the freezing point, use the chroma key to make the background disappear, position it, then go back 20 frames from the end and use the freeze function to freeze the frame, then delete the part behind it, and finally repeat it again with the third value, with as little differences that I have to rotate this layer by 5 degrees. As soon as I'm done, I pull out the layers to match the end of the last layer, correct the offset values to round numbers, preferably so that they match the offset values of the previous layers. I check where I missed a step. Correct the chroma key and other values and improve the rotation and positioning. After I have set everything on the value layers, I draw out the length of the layers below to match the new animation, then I quickly check the result and correct again what I missed. Well, I like it better, let's continue with the next part, with which I want to achieve the effect as if the numbers sink into the background. I achieve this by placing another red-blue background on the topmost layer, then lowering its transparency, and going from the beginning to the end in the order of the layers, and correcting them where necessary. The goal is that as soon as the number's animation ends, this pale background appears above the white number, creating the effect I described earlier, that it already covers the first number, but not the other two, i.e. they remain white. Then I find the start of the next animation, cut the top background layer in half, and adjust the layer order again so that it now covers the second number as well. I will repeat this with the third number, and then with the animation of all three values. Since I spent a lot of time setting the correct order of the layers here, I'll speed it up a bit so it's not so boring, and here's the result. In order to make the connection part a little more spectacular, I will use this built-in sticker animation to enhance the visual experience. I find the end of the animation where the number blends into the background, then I place the sticker on it and make a compound clip out of it so that I can rearrange the order of the layers. I move the start a bit, then place it above the first animation roughly in the middle, and move it behind by changing the order of the layer. I use another little trick, by cutting it in half and placing the layer above it, when the beginning of the animation has already played, so that the little sparks appear not only on both sides of the layer, but also above it thus further enhancing the 3D effect, which will look something like this. Unfortunately, the order of the layers keeps changing, so I have to constantly check and correct the rest of the video, but once I'm done with it, I'll select parts of this new animation, copy it, then find the start of the next animation and paste it. I move it to the second layer and adjust the layer order, then repeat these steps again for the third layer. I correct the order of the upper background layer again until I achieve the desired effect, 
A quick final check and we can go to the next animation, which will be this lightning sticker when the values are connected to the background layer. I place the sticker on a new layer similar to the previous one, make a compound clip out of it, cut it in half so that the animation plays only once, then delete the unnecessary part, then rotate, position, reduce the size, and rearrange the order of the layers. As soon as I am satisfied with the result, I repeat these steps for the second and third value layers, and here is the result. Damn it! The layer orders are messed up again, so I'll fix them quickly and we can start the final touches. In the Amon video, the background moves a bit, but so that we don't always do the same thing, I will use this blue ray effect for the background animation. I drag it onto the first layer and adjust the values so that the blue ray effect just ends at the end of the intro animation, then I drag it onto the second part as well, copy the values, and then check the final result. Since I don't really like the fact that this effect is constantly visible even during the animation, I look for the part where the blue ray effect ends towards the end, cut the background layer in half, delete the blue ray effect from the middle part, and check the final result. And a final touch. In his video, Iman highlights the numbers with a white circle, which we can easily put together. I simply check where the first layer's movement animation ends, position it there, then drag the white background onto a new layer, uncheck the uniform scale checkbox so that I can change its size freely, roughly place it on the middle layer, adjust its transparency so that I can see it better, and then I position it so that it covers but does not hang over it, then I create the circle effect using the mask slash circle function. I adjust the feather properties so that the transition is not so sharp, I check and modify the previous properties until I am satisfied with the result. Once everything has been set, I find the end of the next animation and copy the previous white light effect layer onto another layer, adjust it along its length, position it and rotate it by minus 5 degrees, then find the end of the third animation. Copy the white layer again, adjust the lengthwise, I position and rotate it by plus 5 degrees, check the order of the layers, and finally, here is the final result. If you enjoyed this little Iman video effect, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and if you have any questions about the things presented in the video, or if you need any of the pictures, write them in the comments below. And if you want to see more, then watch this video of mine, where I present Ali Abdul's effects. See you in the next one.